Hello everyone and welcome to the streaming. If you're watching this at home, on your own couch, uh, as a recording, then you'll find the, the edited version on YouTube. But if you're watching this live, oh well, then you're in for a treat. Today we have four topics, just to be a bit more seemingly organized. I'm not though. So four topics today. And uh, so let's let let me delete what we talked about last time. We talked about uh, some famous people. Uh, we, we talked about the rule of that in Hungary, and the emphasis is always on the first syllable. And since today I am going to read you the text, which is is not not this one, because that we don't care about that one. Um, but this one. So, when I read it, I will read it in Hungarian fashion. So you can have a proper idea. So that is checking homework. I mean, it's supposed to, you were supposed to, I don't know if you knew about this, but you were supposed to translate it. Um, but you didn't. Because of reasons. Probably I was not very clear about it, actually. But uh, this is going to be an ongoing thing you know, a little bit of translation, trying to, you know, just, you know, trying to accept the challenge of translating. Okay, so, um, right, let's do this. Uh, that first sentence is very easy. It reads, Elkészítés. Let me repeat that. Elkészítés. It's basically a noun with lots of attachments and this one makes it uh, into a noun meaning preparation. Without this attachment it just means to prepare. A húst megmossuk kétszer két centiméteres because that is centimeters centimeteres kockákra vágjuk. Let me read that again. A húst megmossuk, kétszer két centiméteres kockákra vágjuk. Very simple. This means to wash. So we are, we wash the meat, because that's the meat. And then that is cube so we uh, cut the whole thing into two by two centimeter cubes a hagymát megtisztítjuk megmossuk felaprózzuk let's do that again a hagymát megtisztítjuk Megmossuk, felaprózzuk. Now, I mean, you gotta love these kind of words because, of course, every single uh, area of life has uh, their own kind of uh, language, set of vocabulary. So today we are learning about food vocabulary. So the um, onion, we... Uh, that means to clean, so we we clean the onions. Well, uh, we uh, wash it. Again, we do that, and then again, um, we uh, cut it into this. This word literally means that we cut it into tiny pieces. That is the expression. What this means. So again, uh, we take the onions and clean it, wash it, and then make it into tiny, uh, cut it into tiny pieces. A zöld paprikát és a paradicsomot leöblítjük. A paprikát kicsumázzuk és felkarikázzuk. A paradicsomot 
meghámozzuk, fékony csíkokra vágjuk. So let me read that again. A zöld paprikát és a paradicsomot leöblítjük. A paprikát kicsumázzuk és felkarikázzuk. A paradicsomot meghámozzuk, vékony csíkokra vágjuk. Well, that's just a mouthful. It's not very complicated, I would say. So the um, the green pepper, and and then we take the green pepper and the uh, well, this is I mean this could be in paradise as well in English, but tomatoes in this case. Uh, literally, there is no difference between paradise and tomatoes in the Hungarian language. So either you you know going to visit the very famous heaven uh, in the afterlife which is paradise, or you're going to eat tomato. I'm just saying. Context matters. So the green pepper, we take the green pepper and then we uh, we wash it. That literally means sort of like, well, I guess that could be rinse it, but wash is perfectly fine. Um, then I take the, uh, take the, the, the inside of the uh, the pepper or the paprika, which I don't think I know the the proper English word, or if there is any, you know that the the, the part of the paprika. Oh, let me make it interesting. So that's the, the the part of the paprika which is I don't have any though, but you can imagine just the pepper and and you take the inside out because um, we don't you know with all the seeds and all the things and then the the little thing that that just sticks out to whatever it's called um so that that part well yeah i know anyways uh so take the inside out and then uh cut it into let's love this word you cut it into uh circular uh circular um pieces and that's just you know i mean um, probably I have probably mentioned before that Hungarian is the kind of language that really uses different distinguishable words for different distinguishable uh, actions and things. So in this case, uh, this literally means that this whole expression in English that you take the, the paprika and then you when you cut it, the end result will be little circles there you go it's fantastic anyways and then you take the tomato and we uh, we take the we peel it so that means to peel of course you know complete the action and we do the thing uh, these are the attachments and prefixes that you might be familiar with if you're not you will be because I will talk about them anyways uh, and then thin um, uh, stripes so we basically uh, cut it into thin stripes I mean the tomato so there you go that that, that part is done I'm not going to write it down uh, you can watch the recording again of course um, and then you are by the way just to have a little you know uh, break uh, you can type it in and um, that makes sense of it in your own time of course i always you know welcome uh, people who are just nice enough to do this extra stuff um so and then somebody said that something called is the the ribs uh, probably referring to the um uh the pepper like the, the whole paprika thing and uh thank you um yeah i've got good english skills all right anyways so let's go on with this thing because um our time is well not up but you know just let's move on so we take the oil and then we make it really hot that word literally means uh hotify the oil with the, you know in english it of course doesn't make sense but still um and then we um 
Well, basically, um, this is another word which I probably don't know, uh, but uh, this uh, action here it happens to things when they go bad. Uh, you know, you take uh, this kind of paprika and you put it into hot oil, and then you just they age, really. Yeah. And then, um, and I'm sorry, it's not about the paprika, but the, the onion. So, just make it, uh, you fry it a little bit, and then um, take it off. Literally, pull it. Uh, of the uh, the fire and then we uh, spray some uh, red pepper you know you I, I'm pretty sure that if you watch the previous uh, thing then uh, you might be aware because I talked about it for 20 million hours of uh, that uh, in Hungarian cuisine it uh, what really what really matters is 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 that that sort of red pepper powder and of course salt so yeah I would just you know uh, just imagine I know that you love it when I stop in mid-sentence by the way um I just imagine just this this whole cooking thing you 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 put the, you fry the onions a little bit and then the second thing you do uh, when it comes to the actual cooking part is you use the red pepper. So what does it tell you about Hungarian cooking methods? I know. So we just we do, we don't like, you know, just stalling and and leave it leave the best part uh, for, for as the last thing we do. No, we just do it. You know. Uh, you take any, almost any Hungarian dish, uh, this might be a little bit of an exaggeration, but you take any dish and when you start cooking, there comes the bread pepper. That's how it, that's, oh I don't have it though, but I, then again, I'm a li lousy Hungarian, I've got chocolate, with this big egg chocolate that you can apparently get um, in the UK around Eastern. That doesn't matter, that's not red pepper. Let's move on. So we uh, we spray it with the you know like we spread some red pepper over it, and then <laughs> I love this. This means to throw. So you literally uh, throw onto th we throw the meat onto the thing. This 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 whole this whole thing. Uh, yeah, I mean just just imagine. I know this is kind of. Uh, I mean, essentially, that's what you do. I mean, we are not wrong here because you know you're not going to place the meat um, with this, you know, the the little um, two by two cube, uh, cube meat things. You're not going to like tap it with your hand or something. Everything is hot here, so you know, just throw it in. Oh, good lord. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and uh, okay, so we. We do that, and then uh, we turn up the heat. Literally, a uh, strong fire using strong fire. Um, continuously uh, mix it. Uh, well, stir it. To be honest, uh, for a couple of minutes. Literally for a couple of minutes, a and then we just you know cook it. Uh, well, be sorry. I mean, start frying it, and then we add. This one is 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 uh, this add and then add to it. We add uh, the, the the paprika and then a tomato to it, a little salt. Uh, I mean, seriously, when it comes to little salt, I've seen Hungarians doing the little salt thing. That's not a little salt. That's a little salt. Well, you know. A little bit of an exaggeration, but no, you 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 take a tiny wooden spoon and then you say, oh, just a little salt. There you go, there you go, there you go, something like that. So, well, I mean, technically, it's f kind of funny, but if you think about it, these dishes, uh, these um, uh, Hungarian, like in this case, this this um, guyash is is uh, for. A family of a thousand people so you take your biggest 
dish and then just put the things in there. That's the problem, by the way. Uh, and when it comes to, I mean, I love cooking, as in, like, I rarely do it, but I, I, I do enjoy it when I do it. And the thing is that when you, when, if I had to do this here, probably I would have, I would have to eat it for a week and a half. And then, even though I like guyash, I would just go crazy, and it would go bad. Because what you know, when you start it, it's like a million pounds of meat. That's how it starts. So it's not even enough, if I think about it, to invite a couple of friends. It needs to be like a number of friends that are invited. Anyways, going back to the thing. Uh, so a little salt, meaning insanely amount, an insane amount of salt, and then you put the lid. Uh, when under, literally under uh, the lid, uh, and then like medium fire. So under the lid, we use medium fire, and in its own liquid that comes out of the meat, um, uh, we uh, steam it, kind of like let it cook, um, all into an almost. Um, well, what would be the word, the best word here? I would say that um, really, um, I don't know. I, I, I was going to say something uh, soft, but that doesn't really describe it, does it? So, if you can come up with a better word, probably you can. Just fix it for me, please. I'll probably not send you a chocolate for it but you will have my utter devotion anyways so make it soft and then in the meantime love it uh, we uh, because you know I mean now now it's the, actually this says about an hour just you know just just think about it a little bit <clears throat> this is not we are not even done this is not even like uh, filled up with water, which makes it into a soup. No, this is just, just, just stuff at that preparation. A little bit of cooking. So that's, and then you did you do that for about what twenty minutes, if I'm not mistaken. Then you leave it there for an hour, just because. Why not? To make everything really, you know. Um, crumbly, softy, whatever. And then, because you've got all this extra time, here we go. In the meantime, we peel all the vegetables, because, you know, we could have done them before, but that's, that's really not using our time properly. So we peel the vegetables. Literally, this means a kind. So vegetable kinds. It's like mankind. And uh, a tiny, and then you you you're probably familiar with uh, cubes. So we cut them into tiny cubes. And uh, oh yeah, just the, the word has arrived, which I obviously recognize. It's uh, so going back to the meat, it's tender. Yeah, that's what that's what eluded me before. So yeah, good work, thanks. Um. Right, now, going back to the whole thing. Um, so, uh, we cut them into tiny pieces, and then... Uh, we take the, the, the pasta, literally, with the pasta, I mean, so you take the, the, the vegetables, and with the pasta, um, you add it uh, to the meat. You know, so, that's awesome. And then, since we've been doing this whole thing for more than an hour now, because first of all we are actually um, cooking for a whole army, that's the first thing, and the second is that we had, these ex we had this extra time, and then we are talking about lots of vegetables, so, you know. Then, uh, once we added all these things, and uh, we um, pour water 
uh, as much that means as much and then of course this is the as part so as much water as uh, we and this is my favorite part would like I mean the whole soup so we we pour as much water as we like that's a thing so when and this is kind of like a loophole you know like a back door because if you take a ton of vegetables and a ton of meat and you 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 take like I don't know uh, 20 million gallons of water uh, then that is what you can call the uh, the school cafeteria guillage lots of water only a tiny amount because of the insane amount of spices that we are going to put there in a minute we um, uh, we can fill it up with as much water as we want now of course when you do it at home you don't go for this whole cheap thing uh, because well you're supposed to love your family and as a result you don't pour as much water in there so you can keep it almost like a stew well that's how my mum does it that's how I would do it if I had 20 people over right and uh, then we have all sorts of stuff that I can't recognize well I can't say them in English I'm, I'm unfortunately so we spice it up with the thing and then under the um, under the lid uh, we um, just you know uh, put that um, into um, uh, let's just cook it until it's ready and finally according to our taste uh, literally this means according to our taste or just according to taste in general because Hungarian tends to dehumanize things um, we put more salt in it I know it's awesome and um, we uh, put some pepper uh, that is probably fresh freshly grinded uh, pepper uh, we, we put it on the top and then that's how we serve it now those of you who followed the whole thing uh, which I did that's cool I think and uh, then you might remember that there was this whole idea of, of, of a cream in a tube that I talked about last time uh, that is something that this recipe just fails to um, implement even though it's in the list of ingredients so I would say that when you actually before you put the water in then you just you know push the whole tube in there well not the whole tube but it, it really depends on the size of the army at this point maybe like 20 tubes um, of guillage uh, extract kind of so that's something but of course this was mostly translation and not uh, although I turned it into how to cook things because I just love talking about food anyways that was the first session I believe of the whole thing and then uh, we are going to have a tiny amount of recess just to recuperate uh, from all this and then uh, in the next part we are talking we are going to talk about these three topics that are more connected to um, the culture and not uh, the grammar or not the, uh, the vocabulary right welcome to session number two or part two or whatever you want to call it and now we have actually four um, I really did that that was not part of a joke and um, yeah that's really a joke anyways so four topics today 
and uh, the first one is uh, a kind of a relevant question uh, do you know how I can convert my keyboard to use correct Hungarian letters and first of all this is the link I sent it to the stream and then this is the uh, hang on this is the link for the tutorial so assuming that you have a Windows 8 or 10 machine uh, it works mostly with Windows 7 as well I believe if you right click on your start button then you have the list uh, and it says control panel at some point and then you can bother with the icon views when the whole thing comes alive but what you are looking for is language and and technically here even here it says change input methods that's perfectly fine uh, so you basically in language you can add a language and when you add a language well you can add really add an input method uh, you will find it there probably and that's it that's 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 it you you find Hungarian there as the input method and then uh, down in the uh, bottom right corner if you have the start menu like I mean the, the taskbar like mine uh, I don't I don't have it actually like that uh, because I only use my Hungarian keyboard here um, then uh, you basically uh, add Hungarian any sort of language and you're all set now what you need of course is a reference to a keyboard that is well big enough I said big enough well I guess that will be big uh, to know where all the keys are and uh, that is a Macintosh keyboard but most that you know when it comes to all the keys obviously in every single keyboard they are in the same place uh, otherwise you couldn't type uh, like that so here we have the accent marks over there and then here we have the question mark and this part is my biggest pain because if you use an English keyboard next to the Y there is nothing because that I mean next to the Z sorry because in on an English keyboard these the Y and the Z are switched so next to the Z there is nothing I mean probably more shift here but in, in the Hungarian on the Hungarian keyboard you've got the long I this is the short E well in this case as you, as you pronounce it in Hungarian and this is E the long one and so technically you might not be able to you you type the, the long E in there because there is no um, I've got a company MacBook and it has something there uh, which is not the I but when I switch to a Hungarian keyboard on that particular machine then uh, I can access the extra I uh, alternatively you can just buy a Hungarian keyboard uh, which is kind of a pain because the shipping will cost way more than the keyboard itself anyways so going back to the thing but if you don't want any of these you can always try Google Translate because if you uh, set the uh, keyboard to Hungarian here you can actually have a Hungarian keyboard a 101 button Hungarian keyboard so you can just you know and as you can see here this is what I was talking about for some reason they put the I over there but uh, this is this is this is too much shift there shouldn't be this m much shift in here I mean the button so yeah that's it second topic so talking about food of course drinks so what can you tell about Hungarian wine beer and all the juices okay so we have the juices that's fine uh, Hungarian wine is famous there are some good ones uh, probably the uh, the best ones are uh, the Tokai Osu, if if you want to um, look for that, uh, it looks like this. It's really nice. And then uh, 
there is the Agribica Veer, which is another famous. These are the two sort of competing, really famous wine. Um, competing in the sense that 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 Tokai also is 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 a, a, a white wine, and this is um, a red wine. Or, yeah. So, in a way, they are not in direct competition. And there are lots of other stuff. And uh, um, I believe that would be uh, the um, one of the good beers. This one. It's. Uh, I'm of course. You know, there is all like Holstein and, and and other like Czech beers and stuff. But this one is Hungarian. Well, as much Hungarian as you can uh, get nowadays, because you know, globalism and all that. So I, uh, yeah, I mean, these are the the, the good ones. Uh, there are lots of other Hungarian brands, and of course, we, I should mention all the local breweries, which are getting interestingly uh, popular. So if you go to Budapest, and you go to uh, some of the, um, like, um, let me show you, that is... Um, If you go to Budapest, I know this is not going to be Budapest because it detects that I'm not in there. But once we get that out of the picture, uh, but what I'm oh not not China, not really. So um, in Budapest, there is a square around here called Blaha Luisa. Uh, it's over here, there, and around here, close Altair and all these like Kirai Utsa, which means King Street. Uh, here, there is this kind of new place uh, with all sorts of pubs and crazy stuff, and also over there. So, so something like between. Uh, Deaktir and Blaha Luisa and, and th this this area over here so for some reason uh, in recent years there were there are lots of pubs that opened here and they often uh, have local or like countryside breweries uh, selling them uh, beer like their own beer and then some wine and and what well, that's not brewery but like winery but whatever so that's the idea that if you go there you'll find all sorts of weird things uh, obviously people speak English there because that's one of the um, great places to like areas for tourists so because everybody speaks English there I know I tested it I'm guilty um, because I've got some friends who speak English and of course you know why would I speak Hungarian well anyways um, so they speak English very well and you can always request some so they will tell you what's up with all the breweries and and stuff like that uh, and then of course uh, past and future tense so uh, this is another topic and one of the, the the closing because I'm not sure that we'll have time for this one but there is indeed a big difference between this whole English uh, Anglo-Saxon Western culture and Hungarian culture and then I could I usually talk for hours about it for my students and probably I can talk for a couple of hours about it for a couple of hours in the next streaming stuff so anyways as our last topic I guess uh, you know verbix which is over here anyways just sending the link as always uh, if you put any verb there I don't know for instance shetal then you get this nice table with all the conjugations which is awesome oh sorry yeah I there you go. Sorry about that. I forgot that you were watching me and not the screen. This is confusing though. I mean for me. 
anyways so go to Werbix uh, and then uh, put any verb in and you'll find all the stuff and then of course you find future as well because you know why not uh, but this is these are the eight you know present uh, pre uh, de indefinite definite again indefinite definite with the conditional and past indefinite definite again conditional indefinite definite. these are the eight groups that you have to concentrate on because uh, they have their own distinguished uh, or distinguishable uh, or separated endings that sometimes are similar though so you yeah, just be warned but what you have to what you really have to struggle with or probably will struggle with is is definite and indefinite because they look different in English there is no distinction I mean you know you either eat sandwiches or you eat a sandwich or the sandwich that sandwich in particular but then of course because Hungarian deals with endings it will change the this whole situation will change the ending of the verb anyways present past definite indefinite and conditional and that's all you can forget about the future because we rarely use it future is for really emphasizing a, that something happens in the future you will not find that uh, the Hungarians use that often because there is nothing to emphasize basically if you use the future tense all the time it's as bad as using present perfect in English all the time you know just think about it I have gone to the cinema I have bought groceries I have cooked dinner I have done this I have done that it's sort of like big announcements one after another but you should reserve present perfect when for when you have a proper announcement to make uh, such as I have broken my leg I have won the lottery stuff like that uh, so in Hungarian if you use proper future tense that's that's what it looks like or sounds like right so just use present and of course because we don't have simple present and uh, present uh, present simple and present continuous um, we don't distinguish between things that are happening now and happen in general so there you go it's brilliant uh, it's kind of easy I mean you will struggle with the endings obviously because of reasons um there, there are many but you're not going to sort of um, struggle with the the language in a grammatical sense you know like a sentence creating basic tense grammar of tenses sense uh, you will just learn to hate the endings so yeah wow there was a lot of information and I as usual I'm going to stick uh, to this like I'm going to just stream a little bit more but this is the re the end of the recording I mean the, the official recorded session and then again thanks for watching thanks for you just hitting the thumbs up and the subscribe button and all that sort of stuff it helps I don't know how <laughs> because uh, well I mean how as in I pretty sure that like uh, people on YouTube get like loads and loads of money um, but um, no it just what hel what it helps with at least at this point to me is is to know that uh, there is um, you know I mean you like it basically there is a need for uh, me to continue stuff so but as again I'm really grateful for everybody who watches and I'm pretty sure that most of you I know um, in not in person but on the internet because uh, I always encourage people to add me on Facebook and stuff like that so just you know don't be discouraged to do so anyways thanks for watching and then uh, as the recording um, the recording concerned 
uh, this is the end. Goodbye.